Blog Talk Radio. Like me for me, I was like, oh, this is easy. 
I could be me all wow. day. Yeah. Yeah, it's always good when you're doing something that comes natural. You know, you don't have to work hard to try to be anything extra. It's just you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So, um, what, I mean, what led to it? Like, how did you get started with comedy? Like, was that something you knew you yeah, always wanted always. to do? No, I just want to be in the entertainment business for real. So I put up that video and people started following me. Then people want to see me in person. So when mm-hmm. I see me in person, I can't just sit down and put a phone in my face. They wanted me to make them laugh, just like Bernie Mac and Kevin Hart and everybody else. So it went from online to get them in line mm-hmm. at comedy shows. Wow. And I just, so, and to be honest, you know, they like my stand up even better than the videos. Wow. Because yeah, you get to really be in the presence and see that for real. And, man, it's just God's plan, man. It's just, I could try to take all the credit I want, but it can't be me. Because if, if I could control it, I would have had all this time for it. So, you know, I ain't that, I ain't that smart. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. No, I'm serious. Um, so, um, tell me about Wayne Collie. Like, who, before he and Country Wayne, like, what were you doing prior to that? Hey, I was making kids. Yeah, I got nine <laughs> children. So, just think how, this was gospel show. You probably don't want to ask me that. <laughs> you, might, you might better come up with another question because, hey, the fruit of my labor, you can see it. Listen. Oh, my goodness. I have a nightclub, right. though. Mm-hmm. I had a nightclub. <laughs> That's what I had before the company. I had a nightclub. Okay. And I had to let that go because I got scared to go there. There's too many guns. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's understood. <laughs> yeah, I got scared to go to my own club. Oh, my God. Man, you know, and I, and I tried everything to calm the violence down. I even tried to play Kurt Franklin. One night, something about the name Jesus. Man, shoot, my still got shot. I said, man, we get the hell out of this bitch. <laughs> so where did your, uh, where was your nightclub at? Well, it, it was in Georgia. It was in Georgia, man. It was in Georgia. Well, they were shooting like they was in Chicago. In oh, Georgia. goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Wow, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> you telling me? <laughs> you should have been there. Go to your all night club. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> man. Um, so everyone is working towards you know that moment. Of course, you reach that moment where your work is going to pay off for you. Uh, what advice would you give to that person who is waiting on that big break? You know, because a lot of people want overnight success. Uh, mm-hmm. Hey, just, be, just be you, man. If a person can find a way to be them, it's going to come on time. Because you can end up being semi-successful being somebody else or not doing what God wants you to do. But that success going to end. You, you might be successful, but then your relationship with your family might not be right. Uh, you, you know, to get it balanced and real success where it feels good, you got to be you because – you are who God created you to be. So if you're being right. somebody else, you off your path. And you still might end up mm-hmm. becoming financially successful being somebody else, but you're not going to be successful internally. You're not going to be happy. So if you really want this country mm-hmm. Wayne success, which is, I don't know where this man in the world. You know, I don't have more money mm-hmm. than Jay-Z or nobody, physical dollars, but what I got in me and the feeling I feel every day, find mm-hmm. a way to be you for real. And don't be worried about what people be saying when you are being you, you know? That's right. the real key to success. Be you mm-hmm. and your success. Even if you're selling tires, you might just got a business selling tires. You're going to be a successful time salesman if you be you. So, you know, mm-hmm. find a way to be you and you're going to be successful. But that's hard to do for some people because they're scared of the judgment. But I'm me. Mm-hmm. I, don't talk like a, I don't talk like nobody. Yeah, but everybody still didn't love me because they like, he's comfortable being him. And people... Uh, Attracted to that, to that, a person mm-hmm. who naturally them people like that because they want to be themselves, but they don't know how to be. Mhm. I like that. Yeah. I like what you say. Yeah. A mm-hmm. lot of people are trying to imitate what they see 
oh, this person blew up by doing this, so I'm going to try to do that. You know, a lot of people are not being themselves, so I like that you said that, you know. Oh, yeah. You got to be yourself. Yeah, okay. too many people trying to be somebody else, so you ain't. That person already is successful. We got all different got different fingerprints. So let that marinate neck bone do so. You <laughs> must desire to be yourself, buddy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Yes. Um Man. And I love that you're always acknowledging Christ, like always like giving thanks to God for everything that's happening in your life. So how um do you combine that um you know, your faith walk, you know, with your business? Man, I put it in everything I do. Even some things I don't even supposed to put them in. But he have to tell me sometimes, look, I don't got nothing to do with that. Like, would you let me know? Um, <laughs> but I put them in everything, man. And and like I say, it got to be a God. Because I made a lot of things going on good for me. But if I had mm-hmm. that much, if it was just me doing it, some things in my life I would have changed. So, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm weak. So I'm just telling everybody we all are weak. Put God in what you're doing for real. And people going to say, I do put them no. You know whether you put them or not because it's going to show. You know what I'm saying? Like the people, right. in the, just like in the wilderness when Mo, Moses was trying to get them out of Egypt. They was they knew God, but they really weren't believing him. They praised him. They went to church and all that. But that don't mean you believe. When I say believing in him, even when he mm-hmm. tells you so crazy. Even when he told Abraham to go sacrifice his son. But when he got there, he said, I'm just playing. You ain't got to do that. But it just so <laughs> it just so that he believed in God that strong for him to do that. You know, man. Right. Most of us won't go all the way. Like, I'm crazy about him now. Like, man, I, listen, I'm serious about that God thing. If I ain't serious about nothing else, it really works. So on some people, mm-hmm. it can work and it ain't boring. Because some people make God look boring. Like, oh, you got to be like, oh, oh yeah. hallelujah. Man, God got that sauce. I'm telling you. <laughs> All you right. Want sauce. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. You it better know fun, it. Man. Yeah. So, you know, just put them in everything you do. And when I say put them in there, that voice in your heart that you know each situation, you know what's right. If somebody step on your shoes mm-hmm. and they didn't need to, it's okay. I'm sorry. Right. I accept your problem. Right. Just doing the right thing in small situations. If somebody owe you money and they ain't got it all and they just got half, just take it and go. But if you see them in the club, then the other half now, then you got to let the devil come out and cut them out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you no, that now. You got to be real out here too now. <laughs> can't be, can't be Oh, God going to take care of it. He don't took care of it. You better go get a bite. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's probably what was going on at that club. Folks was coming in there to get their money. That's probably what was going yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> that one, I wasn't supposed to have that club. God told that one for me. That's what that was. <laughs> so he made, have a great he made a war Man, yeah. listen, boy, that club is ooh, lost. I, oh. oh, my goodness. Yep. So, so you put God with yeah. you doing, Yeah, you have to. And a lot of people don't believe in that, but they need to learn that you have to keep God first in everything you do. That's how you're blessed. That's how doors open for you when you put God first. A lot of people are trying to put themselves first or they're putting everything else above God. And they're leaving him behind or, you know, he's like a spare tire calling you when they need you, you know, but you really have to keep God first in your career. And that's how things take off. And people are asking, like, how are you successful? It's because you're keeping God first, you know, and oh, yeah. God has allowed you, you know, as a comedian to just naturally be yourself. That's when, you know, God is in it. When you ain't, you don't, you don't have to try to be nobody else. you just being yourself and everything is just flowing, you know, so that's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. So it is, is man. Amen. So, um, Amen to that. Yeah. So, how do you um remain humble? I mean, we I know like you're spiritual uh, minded. You know, how do you still remain humble? Like some people that that fame, the money, the attention, you know, all those followers. Like, how do you keep yourself humble? Man, I read that Bible every day, and I'm on my fourth trip through it. 
So the story, mm-hmm. the stories in the Bible keep you humble because you see what he did. See, they tell you the good God did, but he ain't see. People don't like to talk about the bad he did when you didn't follow him or idolize him. So mm-hmm. the stuff he did, oh, Lord, I do not want to be on this. So I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared of them. Mm-hmm. I'm scared to be like, yeah, I got it. And I was doing it. Yeah. Well, he would take it away and embarrass it so bad. So uh, I'm mm-hmm. just going to. If I know I know what's going on in my life and it feels good, and I just share this feeling with others, but I can't mm-hmm. brag about something that ain't mine anyway. It ain't mine. All right. Yeah, how am I saying this ain't mine? This ain't my career. This for the people that want to laugh. Mm-hmm. You know, this ain't my money. It's time for money for real. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah, they getting it off. <laughs> Out of kids. So, you know, that's what keeps me home. I don't know what keeps anybody else home, but, man, listen here. Yeah. It's his. You know. Nah. So. Well, something ain't yours. So, How you um, going to act crazy anyway? Oh, true. All right. It all belongs to God at the end of the day. You can have it one day, mm-hmm. and the next day it can be gone, you know. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Uh, and I know you just had a a, a new baby. So, like, how yep. are you managing to balance, you know, fa- you know, being a father, traveling, you know, doing your comedy? Like, how are you keeping it balanced? I try to go home at least every two weeks. Um, not so much lately, but and then November and December, the industry shut down. So I shut down and I go home during the week, every week for them two months. And then, you know, and just FaceTime a lot and just get prepared for, you know, really going on television. So, you know, it just, it, you know, he balanced it out. He balanced it out. You know, it leaves me mm-hmm. less time to do some stuff that I want to do. Uh, so I didn't have kids. But that stuff gets mm-hmm. you in trouble anyway. So, you know, you do what you're supposed to do. You do It's enough time for you to do what you're supposed to do. But sometimes you do what you want to do and don't have enough time or money to do what you're supposed to do. So, hey, it'd be enough time, man. I just can't yeah. go out and party and stuff no more. But hey, the whole thing, I ain't trying to get killed in the club anyway. So, um, <laughs> yeah, stay away from the club. <laughs> Ooh, you too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Oh, my God. Kids and, and man, it's just, it's just lovely, man. That's a blessing. Um,. What next projects do you have coming up? Like, are we going to possibly see you getting into acting? You know, because I think you'll be great in, in the movie. So are you looking at yeah, that? Yeah, that's what I'm out here in L.A. for now, man. I'm out here in L.A. Awesome. Doing the, doing the acting thing. Um, you know, right now I'm in the classes, Um, you know, trying to do the drama roles too, thing, not just mm-hmm. comedy. So basically, just he prepared me, just like he prepared me, before I did videos, he prepared me when I hit TV. You know, I um, awesome. make people laugh across the world, and you know, it's just his time. And right now, I'm on the road every weekend for the rest of the year. So my mm-hmm. spare time, I come to LA. I got a place in LA, and you know, I'm focusing on this acting and getting on television. And that's the that's the next step. Okay. Okay. Do you think that um, it took branching out from Georgia to LA? Do you think that helped out? Uh, a lot with your career, or uh, for anybody it's that's helping. looking to go up a little higher. Yeah, it help. It make you know with the internet now, you don't have to move to LA because you could build an audience online. But once you mm-hmm. get an audience, it's still good to get out of Georgia. But because in the South, because I tell everybody, you know, um, it's just different. You know, you from Alabama, right? Man, our minds is, is not as standard like it is the the rest of the world because, um. We we um we didn't know that it's not as racist in California. I'm still think it's racist. Mm-hmm. I think it's white people. I'm like, oh yeah, you look at me, call me a nigga. But no, nah, they, they you know, it's, <laughs> but in our mind, we still we still like that a little bit because that's how mm-hmm. it is. Real people don't know, so that's what happened with me. Country Wayne, what happened? All the country towns in Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi. Uh, um, got connected with me because I, I represented a voice that haven't been we haven't been represented because they don't accept us in Hollywood, but the internet just paved the way for me. So, right, I represent 
a lot of people that Hollywood don't know about. We like foreigners to the world. They didn't know that we mm-hmm. exist because nobody calls the Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, you know, Carolina True. and stuff. So, so once you build an audience back home, whether it's 10,000, 5,000, 2,000 people, you take that power, you move, and try to branch out and make connections so the people who do follow you can see your growth. You know, that's what I always mm-hmm. have done. So, yeah, but you know, if a joker ain't got no following, don't come out here and rent too damn high. You'll be right back. Don't <laughs> um, <laughs> be fine. Don't be hey, fine. They, 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 they said Tiffany Haddish got started by, you know, she moved out there. She was sleeping in a car. Man, she was already staying out here, and she ended up in the car. So if you got family out here, you sleep in the car. If you move out here, you're going to be sleeping in a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> She was already staying out here, man. Don't listen to the story. I'm tell you everything, man. One thing about me, I'm going to tell you the 106 truth. They don't story. That girl probably slept in her car two days. You know what I mean? Yeah. She wasn't getting no mail, though. How she got a mail? She had an address so well. True. You're leaving all them stories, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I love it. I'm telling you the truth. I love your sense of humor. I like it because it's the truth. That's why I love oh, yeah, it. Like it's 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 the truth, and a lot of people can relate to the truth. You know, we need more mm-hmm. of that. And um, just like you said about like Alabama, Mississippi area, it's like there's a lot of people feel like you know we're just a bunch of country unlearned people. You know, so they kind of bypass us. Um, you know, yeah. and with the work that I do. You know, I have a lot of people they don't think I'm from Alabama. They're like, There's no way possible you're from Alabama. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> what you mean by that? Yeah. You know. So, so I'm yeah. representing so, um, so I'm gonna bust this Hollywood door open for everybody. once I go through it all the way, all the country people are gonna get a chance because we sound different. We're nicer. Yes. And people yes. love us. Everywhere around the world. I show so to. now Yeah. So when I get on TV and do these numbers, they gonna want people from the country, whether it's radio, comedy, uh, uh, pounce or what. They gonna want people like Country Wayne because they love us everywhere. They love country people mm-hmm. everywhere now. I'm telling you. Yes, yes. Oh man, well I really appreciate you um, coming on to the Star One Hundred Radio. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day, your busy schedule to. Um, talk with me um, again. Like it's, it's really been an honor because you're such a <laughs> funny person. You're an amazing um, guy, so I really appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, appreciate so, you. Um, Be blessed. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. You just uh, tuned in with Country Wayne. Um, and you can keep up with the show by hitting that follow the um, show and keep up with us so you'll know who we'll be having on the line next. All right? So thank you once again for rocking out with Starter 100. I'm your host, Tanisha D. Davis, and you can keep up with me on Instagram at Tanisha D. Davis, as well as follow Starter 100 blog, S-T-A-R-R-D-O-M 100 blog on Instagram. And we're going to go ahead and tune out to Years of Grace by Young Sick. Later.
cry. My granddaddy called Marshall Apple in my eyes. Something like Mufasa, Lion King, Simba Pride. It passed away the same year, went out of the same club. My whole life was a mess, like where we go from here? I'm on drugs, slanging drugs, hanging with the thugs. They did not the main people that had gave me love. The way I'm living now is not the way they raised me up. But I'm a product of the way this world made me, bruh. Straight lost with no direction, headed for correction. Of the graveyard, my Lord caught the interception. Made me a soldier in his life and gave me a weapon. The power of the Holy Ghost is now my protection. And now I'm stepping, man, I'm running towards my destiny. Jesus Christ is now bringing out the best in me. Some believe, but I'm living for the rest to see. It is only by his grace that I'm blessed to breathe. Listen, 